Hi guys, it's me, Daniel. Um, welcome to episode of Benchmark. You find me inside uh, Neil's lovely 330D. Um, hello, Neil. Hi. Hi. Um, it's not just a regular 330D. Um, you have got the called the MPPK, the M Performance Power Kit. Power Kit. There we go. I was nearly there. Um, which takes the already pretty potent 330D from what's a 250, 260 horsepower standard. Yeah. Um, we just dynoed it. I'm not going to tell you what it made. Click on the other one. I'll put a link up right there so you can watch that. It's a torquey car. Um, the power delivery on this is very different to how it is on, on mine. Um, we saw the dynos, didn't we? And I've got like another 1,000 RPM, um, which is really weird. But I kind of prefer the power delivery because it's a diesel. I like that short stomp, you know, that thump. And I don't have that, but you do. So I'm thinking that this is probably better to drive, especially when you're in the mindset that it's a diesel. Um, and you've got all the M bits, haven't you? You've got the uh, M performance brakes. You've got the M performance suspension. Yeah, is that right? It's the Sport Plus. Sport pack. Plus. Um, it is firmer. It's uh, it's a bit more taut. I'm, I'm in the passenger seat, but I can feel it. Um, so you're, if you're looking for a more sporty ride, then. The 330D is where it's at. The 35D does not really have the same kind of feel. Um, but you've got one other positive as well. It's the fact that it's not four-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive, like the Alpina. Um, which makes it a better handling car. Um, obviously in the wet it'll be a handful, but in a good way. And how, how do you find it, being rear-wheel drive? Yeah, I like it. It's, um seems to be a lot more planted than the um, X-Drive suspension ones. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's not too good with my winter tyres on though. It's, it's a little bit okay, hairy. I think most cars are pretty hairy when you've got winter tyres on. Yeah, I mean, I can feel it's a bit more of a sportier ride. I mean, it's not M3, but it's, it is a sportier car. And I find that funny that they, for the 330D, they give the sporty option, you know, they give you the rear-wheel drive, they give you the, the M Performance kit. Um, but then the more powerful car, they they don't do it. Um, so if you're looking for something that isn't really an M3, you want something that's real world, something that you can drive every day that will get you 50 miles per gallon, um, that still handles keenly. This, this is where it's at, this is the car. Um, obviously if you've got another 20,000 pound, then the Alpina would be the car. But I think this is a, this is the real world Alpina. This is it, this is, I mean it's based on this car. They take this car to their factory, and this is what they base their car on, and it's a fantastic car. So I'm sure that this will be this will be great. Um, and you're going to keep it? Is it a life car? Or is it you just? Uh, yeah, it's not, not a life car, but it's, okay. um, it'll be with me for a few years. But you've had quite a few BMWs, haven't you? So you've you've been through pretty much all the all the range. Yeah, E90, E60, uh, X5, X1. So, pretty much all of them. This is probably my favourite. <laughs> really? Yeah, so you prefer it to the E90, which is a generation before? Yeah, I thought the E90 is quite... I like the uh, steering on it with the high drive yeah, steering. Yeah, likewise. This is sort of a bit bigger, a bit better for the family as such. Yeah, yeah. And the 3 Series always... I mean, that was actually a complaint of mine, because when I picture a 3 Series, I, I imagine a small car. Um, if I want a bigger car for a family, I think 5 Series, but BMW seems to have enlarged all their cars now, so the 1 Series has become the 3 Series, and now this has become almost a 5 Series. Um, but it, it is great. I mean, the space in the back is fantastic. Um, I actually prefer sitting in the back as a passenger. It's almost like a little mini limousine. It's, uh, it's really comfortable. So it's interesting. I find the same thing with the steering. Uh, the E90 does have nice steering, um, but how do you find it? I mean, this is electronic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a bit weird really. When you put it in sport mode and the steering gets heavier, yeah. it feels a little bit um, synthetic. Yeah. But uh, it's not bad. It takes getting used to. Um, I have the same problem. I'd, I'd still prefer, if I had the option, I would say yes please hydraulic. But uh, I mean, it's 2017 and it's the way it's yeah. going. They are getting better. This is one of the better ones I've used. The, um, the Audi was terrible. Um, that was very inconsistent. When you got to a certain speed on the um, the Audi, it would switch from a lighter resistance to a heavier resistance, and you could be mid corner. And I forget what 
speed it was. I think it was like 35 or 40. And when you got to that speed and you're mid corner, it would lighten and it would stiffen, and you're like, oh my god, you, you weren't, you kept giving it more and less. It was yeah. really disconcerting. You were, it scared you a little bit because it wasn't behaving, it wasn't doing what you were asking it to do. Um, and apparently, Lamborghinis are awful for that as well. But, uh, not that I ever have one, but um, it's a bit noisier. You got 19s? Yeah. Yeah, that might be it. Plus, you got the run flats as well. It's just a it's not a lot, to be honest. Mine's got that same kind of raw, the tyre yeah. raw, so I've got the similar. They're not bad tyres, I mean, they're just not especially great. Um, they're good for run flats, they are much, because the old run flats were terrible. My mum's got it on her Mini Cooper, and because that's like a eight-year-old car, yeah. and that's got like the first or second generation run flats, and they were just awful, you know, really crashy. But on this, they're not so bad, but you do get that noise like you're getting now. Yeah. But considering the sportier ride, comfort-wise, 90%. I'll say it's 90% as to 35D. 35D is very soft, very, very soft. Now. A few moments later. Just give me that warning and I hit the button. It's a great thing about Mexico, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> I always come here, it's the best place because they're very relaxed about you doing these kind of tests. Okay. Okay. Ready? That's surprising. 60 was the same. You really would benefit with some Michelins on this, I promise yeah, you. Like well worth the money. Best upgrade I ever did, actually, on the, um, the S3 I had. I put the Bilsteins on it, that was great, but the tyres... And it lasts forever. It lasts forever. I did 12, 13,000 miles on them, and so many laps on the Nürburgring. And I had five and a half mil. So that's impressive. Just want to apologize for the audio quality of this next section. Um, it's my first time with this new camera and it's my own fault really. I should have mounted the microphone separately. However, it was vibrating against the A pillar. Um, it's okay. I mean, you can still hear everything fine. It's just not the quality I would ever want to really do again. So apologies, won't happen again. Okay, so here I am in the driver's seat. Thank you very much, very trusting man. Don't worry, I'm a, I'm a safe driver. Um, I'm looking forward to this, this is good. Of course it's very familiar, it's the same same car. Um, we sit quite similar actually, we're, how tall are you? Six foot. Same, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, this thing was a bit closer. I don't want to change it because I get really annoyed when people mess with my settings. So. Okay, this the response on this is instantaneous, which I find interesting. It, it, it kicked in quicker than it does on mine, which doesn't make any sense when you think about it because I've got a small turbo which is supposed to kick in quicker than your one medium sized turbo. So that's, that's interesting. And it's more, uh, it's more peppy. I like this <laughs> I like this. I re who, did I re who was it? Was it Chris Harris? I forget who reviewed it. Someone that I respect quite a lot said that this was the better car to drive, the, the rear wheel drive 330D, and I just, I forget who it is. And within the first, you know, you know when you first get into a car, and the first few seconds, they pretty much tell you everything, right? Yeah. You know it's going to be a bad car, or you know it's going to be a good car. And um, already, I think this is going to be better than mine. I haven't even touched anything yet. <laughs> Steering's pretty much the same, though. doesn't 
have the rest like I do. I've got that. I've got the rest. The power keeps going. Yours cuts off, but it's still a lot of power. Um, let's put it into comfort. To be fair, because I normally drive mine in comfort. So. said it so many times, diesels make great road cars. I know modern petrol's getting better because they're turbocharged, but just that effortless power, right? It's just that, it just goes. It just goes and there's a lot of torque. When you want to overtake somebody, it's just ready to go. 40 plus miles per gallon, no matter how you drive. Um, that's nothing that winds me up when I tell people, yeah, I get, you know, average of 42, 45 miles per like, oh, is that all? I thought it would do, you know, like a thousand because of these. They don't seem to get it that in the real world, that's actually very, very good. Because petrol cars never get around that average. If you drive very sedately and, you know, cruise behind like a lorry in a petrol car, yeah, you can get 40 ish on average. But our average, we're driving like idiots. <laughs> we're using the performance, you know, we're overtaking, we're enjoying the car and we're getting that great fuel economy at the same time. You're having your cake and you're eating it. Okay, it behaves exactly, of course it does, it behaves exactly the same. The handling's a lot nicer, it's a little bit sharper, a little bit more pointier. Um, it's got a quicker turn in, which is interesting because um, I had to adjust the alignment of mine to get that turn in, and even then it's still not as good as a turn in on this, and that's probably because you haven't got a bunch of crap on the front axle like I do, because it's off the four wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a crazy little car, it's just got that, yeah. Even in comfort mode, it's still got that. It's a punchy, punchy car. Even on 19s, and with your sports suspension, it's, it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. It's a good, good compromise, really. If you put the uh, Michelin's on it, it'll be even more comfortable, and it will handle better again. Win-win. Yeah, I think that'll be the next upgrade for this. Yeah, I need some tyres. And I keep knocking them, but I mean, not that bad for run flats, but still, a Michelin Pilot, Super Sports, or PS... You've got 19s? Yeah. You can get the Pilot Sport 4S, because they only come in 19s, and that is a good tyre. Cracking tyres, Michelin. I did have a look at them the other day. I think they're about two hundred pounds. We can get cheaper here. Look around. Yeah. We can, um, and it is a lot of money. It is, but if you value driving, you love your car. Mission all day long for me. I will never get a budget tire again. I'm not sure where I'm going. My turn right. Right here. Right here. So I'm really surprised by that because the 35D is supposed to have that down low power. Because people say that this has got a lag, you know, because it makes sense, right? It's only got one turbo. But it doesn't, it doesn't have, in fact, it's got less lag. Isn't that weird? But you do have the MPPK. Yeah. Shall I go for this? Down 
must feel terrifying actually from a passenger point of view. I've been in my car with some technicians where they're testing it at very high speed uh, and it was terrifying because it's a very, very fast car. And then we use launch control and going to about 140 miles an hour each time and I was absolutely breaking it. I know how my wife feels now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the worst thing is when you're a passenger is on a racetrack. So I took my missus to Nürburgring and I've been there quite a few times and it, it, it is a lot of g-forces you don't have you, have you been yes yeah yeah so there's a lot of up and down obviously left and right but a lot of up and down it's like a roller coaster um as a driver it, it's quite an experience okay you're like, oh, oh. you know you really get pushed into your seat in ways you couldn't think were possible as a passenger it's a nightmare and i didn't notice until my missus around there and she's feeling sick i'm like oh don't be silly and then i went back a year later i didn't have a car um, I went back with my friends in their cars and I was a passenger and it was their first time there so I was guiding them because I I can help them because you know if you don't know the course you can warn them oh, okay you want to be careful around this one and this one's a, go a bit slow because people tend to crash and yeah I was almost vomiting halfway around it really was yes um, it's a good car it is it's the complete package really so I guess it all comes down to, you know, what do you need? Because handling-wise, this is better than 35D, so this is edging towards the Alpina. It is. Um, when you compare 35D to, to the Alpina, oh my god, the Alpina's amazing! Um, but now when you compare this to the D3 Alpina, it's not quite that leap. I shouldn't be saying that. I love you, Alpina, I really do. Fantastic cars, I'm not knocking you, I'm just saying that this, this is a good handling package. It's funny, you don't take risks when you're in someone else's car, so it was a bit more... Look at that, it's just boom, boom. <laughs> it feels like it's got a shorter gears, but it doesn't. But it feels like it. It feels more like a diesel, and I like that. <laughs> yeah. Should we really try mine? You know, should hop into mine, you can give it, a, give it a go, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Very different cars. Very different cars. If you to be blindfolded, what I do? If you were, you, 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 you just think, how could they be related? Because they are. They're the same engine block. So pretty much the only thing that's different is the turbos. Like, this is accessible performance. This is a car that you can drive nine tenths, and you, you can drive it and feel satisfied that you're getting the most out of it. You feel better as a driver. Whereas if you've got a high power car like I've got, you never feel like you can use it. So it kind of rewards you more. Of course, no one will listen to me, and I will go out and buy 35Ds, and uh, by all means, bigger numbers, right? Everyone always goes for the bigger number, but... The sensible yeah. people that are watching this, please don't do that. Try a 30D first, rear-wheel drive. It's, it's great, it really is. Good car. You don't need the additional power. You're not really missing out. If anything, this will probably put, put a bigger smile on your face. I think actually when you look at the power to weight ratio between a 330D with the MPPK and a 335D, I mm. think they're pretty much the same. Yeah. So, obviously the, the traction in the wet is, is a lot better on the yeah. X-Drive. I think that little punch, that initial... When I say there's no lag, I think it's probably the weight. Because it is missing all that weight. So I may have that smaller turbo to help, but because I've got an extra 200 kilos, it kind of nullifies it, you know, just, that's it, you know, ruins it. Okay, so we just hopped into my, um, <laughs> my other 35D, and um, Neil's gonna take for a little, uh, little drive, see how it compares. I'm a passenger man car. I don't think I've been a passenger man car. So. The type of feel instantly is the suspension is softer. It is, isn't it? And that's with Ibark springs. Um, so you can imagine what it was like before. I guess the 
they had to do it because you've got to make the 35D stand out, right? So it got to sound beefier. Okay. It's probably because of the weight. But I, I know it's faster because I can feel the difference. <laughs> it's got that petrol y kind of top yeah, end. Yeah. Um, and then the numbers it puts down are actually kind of ridiculous. But because of the way it delivers its power, you're like, really? Is it? Is it? And you look at it, oh, well, yeah, it is. You're like, wow. It just doesn't feel it. Yeah. Deceiving. It's probably the weight doesn't help as well. I mean, it's a good 150 something kilos, isn't it? It's yeah. just a lot. It kind of spoils the car. I wish they had a rear wheel drive option. Then, of course, it'd be completely useless and it'd be sideways, but give me the option to go sideways. BMW salesman, and we've been driving both of these cars. I'm like, okay, sir. And there's only three thousand pounds between them. What would you, uh, what would you go for? For me, it's a difficult choice. Yeah, <clears throat> I'd probably still go with the three thirty because mm. the suspension makes the yeah extra difference. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. But if this had the suspension, well, yeah, that's different. <laughs> BMW, you're listening. <laughs> They want it to be. It's an autobahn stormer, right? So they didn't want it to be a M3 or anything kind of close to that. They, they wanted it to be a bit soft. <laughs> okay, so um, it was a fun day. We've been out in the 330D. We've been out in the, free, the 35D. Um, it's a difficult one. They're very, very different. They're the same car, but they're completely different. And now the Alpine is fresh in my mind as well. So, which one's better? They're all better. This is probably <laughs> they're all good. Um, if you're after something that handles well and you don't need ridiculous amounts of power, then the 330D with the uh, the M Performance Package or the MPPK um, is probably the way to go. Um, you know. It's not far off 35D as standard. It's lighter, it handles better. Um, it's, it's, it's more of a sports car. The 35D is more of a luxury limo. Um, it's a cruiser, it's a long distance mile muncher. So if you're gonna do long distance driving, yeah. Okay, so if you're a keen driver, obviously you get the, you get the 330D with the MPPK long distance driver and you don't mind it being a bit soft then it's the 35D if you've got loads of money and you want both then you get the Alpina D3 there you go so the Alpina D3 is both of these cars joined together you get the handling and you get the power so it's completely down to you which one you get really but they're both cracking cars um, thank you Neil for uh, for coming down he's camera shy um, it's been interesting, and uh, make sure you check the other video where we put it on the uh, on the dyno. Um, it makes some seriously good power. It does, really good, impressive car. Okay, guys, cheers. Thanks for watching. Look at that. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. Dear God. What? Hi. What? Why are you still here? Uh, haven't you finished making the video yet? This, this doesn't even make any sense. This is some kind of like back to the future time paradox. You're supposed to be at the end of the video and this is, I haven't even, I haven't even put you in yet. Look, look at all this, I've still got, I've got all this crap to, any, anyway, hi. Um, welcome, uh, this is where I edit my videos. Um, that's my powerhouse, the Ryzen that I just built. Um, and this is kind of embarrassing, I'm in my little office, so, uh, hi. Um, I have a box of uh, Ducati bits, maybe, if that of interest you know. Anyway, um, you shouldn't be here, so um, can you like maybe, I don't know, stop? But it, if you really like me that much, and I appreciate it, I mean, if you really do, um, like, share and subscribe. I would really appreciate it, because the more of you guys that do that, the more easier it is for me to get hold of cars, so I can test them and um, make more videos because I really enjoy sitting at my computer and making videos, it's fun. So uh, yeah, thanks for coming, but this is just a little bit, cre this is creepy, okay? A little bit creepy. So maybe less of this and more of the uh, share or, you know, subscribe button. Sus yeah, subscribe. So I think here I'll put the subscribe, you click there. I usually get this wrong, but this time I'm gonna make sure I get it right. So click there, right, right, like here and I would really appreciate it. Okay, all right, thank you. Bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye.